ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So, oh my gosh, yesterday was insane. So if you guys don't know, yesterday I had a live stream scheduled at 5.30 Central Standard Time. And when I scheduled the live stream, in between that, I was contacting a lot of people in my DMs, emails, and everything else to let people know that I want to do this call-in show. We've done previous call-in shows with no issues. I had real people on there who had firsthand knowledge. I mean, I had at least 20 people lined up to call and tell their story, professionals and everything else. And... um. <laughs> I cannot believe how that stream turned out. Like it, it was insane, the sabotage that took place during my live stream. Um, when I was initially the one talking and it was just me, oh, everything was crystal clear. You could hear me. But the second I went to try and take phone calls, that was when the issues occurred. Like I told you guys yesterday, there was none of my settings were any different than prior. The only thing different was the USB being plugged in, but we later on found out that that wasn't even the issue because when I stopped the stream to try and fix whatever issue that I thought it could have been, and we did fix it, then when I came back onto the live stream, the same issue was occurring where I could not hear the callers unless I turned up my speakers like on my end, but then when I did that, you would hear echo. So I couldn't hear them, but the audience could hear them. So it was like all this weird miscommunication. And like I said, nothing had changed with the way I had my, you know, my setup from the last time we were just having regular, funny, goofy calls about relationships. Right. So then I said, OK, fine. Being that this is not working, let's go ahead. Let me just set up a Google voice number. Y'all call this number. I'm going to give it to the people who are in the, you know, who are already uh, logged into the stream first, who are getting ready to speak. I'll give them the Google voice number. So we do that. Everything is going good again. The first lady, Aisha, she's a research scientist. She's working firsthand, you know what I'm saying, with this whole coronavirus situation. And she was trying to warn people, do not get the vaccine. Do not test for the vaccine. It doesn't matter how much they're paying you. Do not do it. It takes years to come out with, with a safe vaccine. And she works as a research scientist. And she's like, you know, I just want to warn everybody. And she's talking. My feed is getting worse and worse because I'm looking at my camera. Everything's clear on my end. And then I'm looking at my YouTube feed. And the shit is just so pixelated. You could barely even recognize me. Like the whole feed was getting pixelated. And I'm seeing all the comments. People are like, what's going on with her feed? We can't see her. It looks so horrible. What's going on? So then I tell everybody, I said, okay, hold on. Y'all go ahead and um, go to Facebook. Because I was streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And so it was somewhat working. We had also spoke to a nurse who was dealing with, you know, um, patients at the hospital. Then I took my third call from a guy from New York, Chris, and he was talking about, you know, he works in the kitchen and just all this stuff that he's seeing going on in New York. And initially people could hear him. By the time we're like in the middle of talking and saying some real stuff about the city getting shut down, we start sounding robotic. Like where you could not even understand the audio. Now, granted, we've had issues with the live stream before, but even if like the video goes out or the video is not clear, you can still hear the audio. There's been a few times where I'm like, okay, well, the video is not working. Y'all can hear me. We're just going to turn this into a podcast. We couldn't even do that yesterday. It was so bad. Okay. And when I tell you, I was like emotionally and spiritually just drained I was so sad and everybody was calling me yesterday, DMing me like, T, it's going to be okay. I mean, I have friends who literally watch every one of my live streams and they're like, I've never seen nothing like that. Like I watch every single live. I'm on the notification squad. I've never seen your live pixelate like that. I've never seen your audio go out like that. You sound robotic. Like they are really trying to shut you down. Like when you're speaking the truth and you know, the people that I had coming onto the show, they were some heavy hitters. They were going to be, you know, telling y'all a lot of good information because I just don't want it. Want y'all to hear from me. I want y'all to hear from them firsthand. So it just like, it really bothered me that, you know, that the stream was sabotaged, but people let me know that it wasn't your fault you know just come back when you feel like it so I don't know when the next time I'm going to stream again um 
I might just end up interviewing some of these people via my podcast. And I'll let you guys know on my social media when the podcast is up. I just think at this point, YouTube does not really want any, you know, coronavirus videos. Like none of my videos of talking about the coronavirus have been monetized at all. None of the live streams. I have so many demonetized videos. It's insane. But I'm thinking for you guys because you guys keep me going. And you guys have been, you know, just real supportive with the super chats and all that stuff. So that means a lot. But it's it's getting crazy out here, you know, and I just want to do like just a regular video yesterday because I was so drained. I ended up just going to sleep after I had posted some stuff. I went to bed and I woke up this morning. I heard from so many people that Cardi B took to her live stream and she shouted me out. And when I tell you guys that meant a lot to me, like it really did. Like I feel like sometimes all this stuff I'm doing, all this work, all this stuff I've been telling people for the past two to three months has just been in vain. So for her to say this in front of 720,000 people last night that were watching her stream is insane to me. Like everybody apparently was up watching her, but me, you know, my ass went to sleep because I was so drained. And, um, you know, she basically just shouted me out, told people to go watch me, you know, talked about how I've been giving her and other people information, you know, just trying to wake people up. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this. And I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. I just cannot help to panic. Like, I'm just so fucking scared. And hey, you want to know something? Let me tell you something. There is this YouTuber. There is this YouTuber. Her name is Lovely T. Lovely fucking T. Yo, I swear to God. Um, I swear. Like, three weeks ago, she was talking about this coronavirus. And you know, I, I, heard, I heard about the coronavirus. Like, you see, I see what's going on in Wuhan, China. But you know, it seemed like it was really under control. And it just seemed like such a minor thing. But she kept saying... She kept saying, like, this is going to get big and everything. And I started asking her questions about it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So then, um, you know, Chicago, when I was in Chicago and whatever, more or less, um, from the club to the telly and All-Star Weekends, you know, I'm a little drunky drunk. I'm, I, I, I'm already about three Coronas in and Offset. He's a little slumpy slump. So I'm, I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see the lovely T uploaded something about, um, locusts them little bugs and stuff invading and invading um africa and whatever and how it's how it's spreading like in certain areas of africa and and like we was just like wow wow and, and, and mind you this was all-star weekend so this was like i don't know like three weeks ago or, or whatever the fuck and and you know like that was the first and last time I heard people talking about these the locust thing. And all of a sudden, people are talking about it now. And it's like, wow, she she been talking about it. And it looks like it's the end of the fucking world. And I, I respect people's religion. I respect whatever you believe in. But I believe in the Lord. And I believe in Jesus Christ. I, my father is the father of Jesus Christ. Like, that's who my, my father is. And I feel like he put me in this position... To tell you because there's certain things that I don't want to fucking talk about that I like my conspiracy theories. I don't want to talk about it because you know I don't want nothing to do with that. But I could. What I do want to talk to you about is believe in Jesus, believe in God, pray in God. Um, God, please don't let um. Don't let the devil control this world. Please control it. You always control everything. Because. Shit. I ain't gonna front. Like, I ain't the person to type panic and everything. But, you know, I've been talking to people that have been alive for a long time. In the 80s, they said that this should never fucking happen before, bitch. Honey. So that is proof Cardi B is definitely a tea sipper. So, you know, once again, that means a lot to me because so many people take from my content watch my content and then they take it to their major platforms and try to regurgitate my shit <laughs> the real <coughs> wendy you know <coughs> breakfast club and so many other people but they want to act like i don't exist 
And I put work into my research. I put work into the people I talk to, into the edits, into the information that I gather and I put together for people. So to have somebody on that level who currently has a viral song, you know what I'm saying, that's on the damn charts, the coronavirus song. You know, take time out to acknowledge me and to acknowledge my hard work. That made me feel so much better, you guys, because I I really felt bad yesterday because it's like I hyped up the show. I wanted everybody to come. We had over 7,000 people show up between Facebook and, you know, YouTube. And to not be able to give people a show just really hurt. So, you know, for her to, like, just shout me out and say, you know, job well done and keep up the good work and y'all go watch her, that means a lot to me because when all this first started happening... I hit up her, a bunch of celebrities, you know, a bunch of people that I know who are in the industry, who fly a lot, you know, who are traveling and things like that. And I was like, look, I know you guys are busy. You guys don't necessarily have time to watch YouTube videos and all that. But I'm letting you know now that there's a very serious virus going around. Please, whatever you do, stay out of China. Do not go there. This coronavirus is real and it's going to get a lot worse. I warned her, told her to let the Migos know, you know, all types of people. I was, you know, sounding the alarms to not just you all, but, you know, people that I know personally in my personal life. And some people listened and some people didn't. But we're all seeing now the ones who listen. We're not, you know, we're stressed. We have anxiety, but we're not in stores fighting over toilet paper. We're not in stores fighting over the last can of ravioli, you know, hand sanitizer, because we've been prepared. We've been, you know, gathering little things. We've seen this coming down the horizon. And I don't know where all of this is going to end, you guys. I don't know when this will be over, but this is for the long haul. This is not something that's going to be over in two weeks. We're going to be stuck in our homes for a while. I don't want to say too much right now. There's a lot of information I'm getting from different people that literally it's hard for me to sleep. My anxiety is bad. Even when I went to the store earlier today, I had on my face mask, I went to the store. I even get anxiety when I walk into the store, not because of the so-called virus or breathing something in. When I see empty shelves and I see There's no more Pampers. There's no more baby wipes. There's only one box left. Like that does something to me. This is not a world. I'm trying to like hold it in and not get emotional. Okay. You know, I hate crying on camera. Um, This is not a world that I'm used to, especially in America. Like I'm used to, you know, we we go to a store. We want to get this and that. As long as you have money, you can get that. You have access to that. And To see that even if you have money, you can't buy certain things, you know, like even today when I was at the store, I seen like two boxes of Pampers left and I called, you know, my, um, I text my brother and my sister-in-law, like, what size does the baby wear? Let me just go ahead and they're like, no, we got enough. Uh -uh -uh -uh." No, this is not something short term. This is going to be a, a continual thing. I see two boxes of diapers. Let me go ahead and at least grab a box. I didn't want to take all two because let me leave something for somebody else. I at least grabbed her a pack of size three Pampers. You know, they weren't cheap because, damn, I I forgot how much damn diapers cost. Okay, but I grabbed her a pack just for the fact, like, you know what I'm saying, whatever I can do to help out. But um, it's just it's just very... I just got really bad anxiety at at the few stores I went to today because it's just like to see empty shelves and to see panic and worry on people's faces and, you know, people wearing masks. The only thing that I'm hearing from people, people who have knowledge of what's for the most part going on, is that this is going to be like this for quite a while. So please take this seriously, you guys. Please do what you have to do. You know, I know I sounded crazy two, three months ago. A lot of y'all didn't get it. A lot of you guys dismissed me. I was, you know, getting flu shame to death. Oh, more people die from the regular flu. Shut the fuck up. And it's like, bro, I understand the regular flu. Trust me. I I had, you know, a little cousin die from the flu not even two years ago. Like, I understand that the regular flu can kill. She was 10 years old. She died from the flu. You know what I'm saying? It's not something I talk about on YouTube, but I understand, you know, what the flu can do to somebody. So nobody's minimizing the flu. But this virus is the real deal. And it's very serious. And if you catch it, you may end up like this gentleman on the news. So far, all these celebrities are talking about they feel good. They're fine. You know, they just happen to get a test on the whim. Well, here goes the regular people really dealing with Corona and 
They didn't even get a test until it got that bad. Most people right now who are complaining of chest pains, breathing, coughing, they can't even get a test because there's not enough tests out there. And that's what I've been saying from day one. So a lot of these numbers are screwed. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video. This, uh, this gentleman I have posted on Instagram. Check this out. The symptoms are, but we've yet to actually hear from someone who tested positive. Well, that all changed tonight after I spoke exclusively with one Ohio man who opened up about his battle with the virus. I had a tickle in my throat, just the smallest little tickle. That's how it all started for Kevin Harris, a resident of Warren, Ohio in Trumbull County. He spoke with me from his hospital bed Sunday evening. It all begins back in early March when Harris says he was taking a break from his auto body shop, staying at home for several days, not in touch with anyone except for his dog. He says he went to a Cleveland area hospital for a doctor's visit. When he got there, he didn't know what he was walking into. Even though I didn't know who I was walking into or who I was in the elevators with, that's where I believe I got it from. Later, he learned two people who were at the hospital at the same time he was recently came back from a trip exploring the Nile River. They had tested positive for the coronavirus. Harris saying he was in the same area as they were. On March 2nd, the symptoms began, and soon he tested positive for coronavirus. He now says the worst part is breathing. It takes 20 minutes for me to catch my breath after he picked me up out this bed and set me in a chair. Do you feel like you're going to beat this disease? Frankly, I do not. But he's determined to beat the deadly disease. It's draining me. It's killing me. But I have a fighting chance. Like, if anybody was going to get this and not spread it <clears throat> so that we could be made aware of what it does and what to do about it, I'm the perfect person for it. Harris is now calling on everyone to take the coronavirus seriously and to take the precautions health officials are asking you to. The best thing you can do is stay away from the people that won't survive this. But your grandparents, this will kill them. Social distancing is not a joke. We have to stay away from each other just for a couple of months to let this thing pass. Very moving words there from Kevin. We will have all of the recommendations from the CDC posted on our website. All right, so you guys just saw that video. You know, and I feel so bad for him. And it was just really scary when they asked him, do you feel like you'll get better? And he honestly just does not know. You know, so this is real. And again, my intentions was never to fear monger, to make people scared, to bring people, you know, anxiety. My intent always was to just put the truth out there and to let you guys know, look, unfortunately for us, especially in the black community, we're usually the last ones to know about things like this because we're so busy dancing and rapping and, you know, trolling and, and you know, acting a fool on social media and we're so enamored with other stuff and we're so easily distracted. So I'm glad that I made those videos. I'm so happy that my friend, you know what I'm saying, in China, we are now friends. She came into my life and, and was giving me the real tea on what was going on over there. So while everything I've been saying is coming to pass, I don't get any glory in that because it, it makes me sad that we got to this point in the world. Like this is not even an American problem. This is a worldwide problem. And I'm hearing from people from all over the world. Like somebody wrote today in Colombia, they're telling people if they are caught leaving the home, leaving their homes, they can get up to two years in jail. You know, so certain countries right now are under martial law. Certain states right now are under martial law. So it's, it's real out here and people need to read up. There's only so much information I can say. There's only so much I can give. There's only so much information other YouTubers who are talking about this can say and give. It's your job at the end of the day to do your due diligence and to weed through the misinformation because there's plenty of misinformation out there too. So don't get too distracted by the BS. Make sure that you're focused on the stuff that's really affecting you in the here and now. Also today, if you guys do not know, there was an earthquake that hit Utah. And what's ironic about that is the Utah Jazz, they were one of the first teams in the NBA to, you know, to contract the coronavirus. You know, so it's just ironic that they were in the news for the corona and now they've been hit with a 5.7 magnitude earthquake this morning. So between this virus, which is a plague, 
between the locusts and the bats and, you know, earthquakes. It's like, what is going on in 2020? A lot of this stuff seems very, very biblical to me. A lot of it. And, you know, maybe you guys are not religious or you don't believe in God, a God, you know, that's neither here nor there. But a lot of this stuff seems like some type of prophecy, you know. So I would just suggest for people to, you know, hold your loved ones close. Tell folks that you love them. Let them know how you feel about them. Don't hold back and, you know, just stay positive. Stay calm. Don't panic. But do realize that it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And that's just me keeping it 100. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Deuces. Deuces.